of this video right now, but who do you call when you need to remove thousands of bees from Times Square, like you see in this video here? The answer, Officer Darren Mays, the NYPD's beekeeper who's been, I guess you could say, having one really beezy summer. Thank you, I'm here all week, folks, with my puns. But Officer Darren Mays, live in Picks Plaza this morning with me. Good to see you again. Pleasure, it's been a while. The, the official NYPD beekeeper. Now, it's so interesting, because so many times when we talk about beekeeping, when we hear that the swarms of bees congregate somewhere, you don't automatically think that an NYPD officer is gonna be the one to respond. And I interviewed you a couple <laughs> years ago where you suited me up and we saw the bees and everything. How did, for those who never saw that, how did you get involved in this? Um, years ago, I, I had a buddy named Rich. I made fun of him taking beekeeping classes and uh, I laughed I thought it was very funny because you know I didn't think that was a hobby that anyone would want to do because yeah. we think of honeybees or bees we just don't think of uh, them being stinging insects so he did it I went to his house visited his hive got sucked into it knelt next to his hive for like an hour yeah he, he left me outside I didn't realize it looked up they all laughing at me and I just the rest is history. gravitated to became a Became a fascination of yours. So why are we seeing this specific summer? Right? We had two recent incidents in Times Square where there were swarms of bees, and one of them was in a garbage can. Yeah. What happens when bees swarm? Uh, when they swarm, that's the natural thing to uh, actually, to when it, one of two things. When the hive is crowded, they can swarm. Um, they have more room. And it comes from mismanagement sometimes, but that's the natural habitat to keep the life going and everything like that. You have the new queen should take off with half the hive, and the old the old queen would take off with half the hive, and the new queen will stand back and um, keep the colony going. Right, and so you suit up here, right? You got your bee suit here yes. with you. But a lot of times, because when I interviewed you last time, even though you put me in one of these, you pulled the bees right out. You didn't have gloves on, nothing. 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 And so, because the whole thing is, I think people automatically fear them that they're automatically out to sting you. And that's not the case. Not with honeybees. Maybe with yellow jackets, but not honeybees. When they're out foraging, they're not going to um, sting you because they're just co collecting nectar or, or pollen. And uh, if you're in the hive working like we did, yeah. then they will because they're protecting the brood. You know, right, and the queen is in here, guys. She's in here. Queen, we called her Queen Ogiante, we named her. Um, <laughs> she's in here right now, and she's somewhere working hard, right? And now all of these bees are doing what? Workers. They are the worker bees. They're tending to the queen in there. They're tending to the cells which have the uh, larvae and the brood. Okay, so you, when you go to somewhere like Times Square, you use this bad boy. Because yes. some people are like, oh my gosh, they're going to kill all the bees. This is made for this kind of this, thing, right? This vacuum is made for this. It's, uh, it's called a BVAC, Colorado BVAC. It's, uh, it has a valve here, which we're able to control the suction. Yeah. So therefore, it's not bringing in any powerful suction to yeah. kill the bees. So it's retrofitted. And also underneath, you can see this board here. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Where yeah, yeah it doesn't have the big opening right. like a regular vacuum to uh, pull in a right. heavy and suction. and it keeps them safe because you then rehouse them somewhere else because they're yes. a huge part of like just nature and the keeping ecosystem. the circle of life going. Yes. And so you rehome them, you rehouse them where? I take them home or at the rooftop of the precinct where you visited me uh, right. before. Right, and what's it, what, now what do you do at home with them? How many bees you got at home? I have about 12 colonies or 12 uh, hives at 12 home. 12 hives at home. Hives. If I had one hive, I would be In the nervous. backyard. And so when you approach the hive, this is what you had last time. This is like the smoker, right? Yes. We have a lot of, we have natural smoke coming from our good friends here, <laughs> the steam pipe. But you approach them with this to kind of get them as like a friendly It's Yeah, it's a calming because they can send out the alarm scent, a pheromone scent alarm that, you know, the, the hive is in trouble or being attacked or something. So we do that to smoke them to kind of mask their scent. You know, I gotta say, I think I'm pretty knowledgeable. You, you want me to join the team? You should come on. I could think come I could on. join the team. You got an opening. I'm allergic, but that's okay. <laughs> you got an opening. Oh yeah, because your partner, he retired. He retired last year. Yes, Mike Loriano. And and uh, what's what are you? What's the next? For, what's next for you? Um, upon retirement, I'm gonna work with a commercial beekeeper, the guy who sold me my very first packages of honeybees. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So. so, well, the best part of everything though is, you literally make your own honey, right? I do. I do. So, so you bottle, is this a fresh honeycomb? It's fresh honeycomb. Remember you stuck your finger yeah, yeah. in there Yeah, yeah, we do that now or no? Time? Absolutely. So Knock you, yourself out. You got this tape? So this, well, you just put your, boom. Look at that. Comes right out. Fresh honey. Oh my gosh. Good stuff. Not bad. Not bad. So now do you sell this? I don't. Uh, <laughs> you not, got a business a, right here. Well, 
upon retirement. Um, but this is the one you commented on about, uh, I had on Twitter a couple yeah. of years ago, uh, last year, the different flavors, the different varieties, and you liked it so much, I brought it for you. Oh, you, Look at that. Can you explain, real quick, guys, and, what's up with the different shades? Well, the different shades depends on the flower you get in a different time of the season. What we have here is the wildflower. Um, actually, this is the wildflower. Yeah. And this one is called uh, Napweed, K-N-A-P. Oh, wow. W-E-E-D, this is Napweed. This is from the rooftop of the 104, yeah. which is in Linden. Wow. And what we have on the dark one is called yeah. Knotweed, the Japanese Knotweed. Oh, wow. Yes. And look, he's got his own labels, Darren Mays and everything. I mean, you're the pro. <laughs> you guys get nothing upstairs. Well, nothing. He, is, he is the pro, you are not. not he is the pro. You must share. I'll share. All right. What'd you Journal say? I said, you stick to journalism. You I'll stick, stick to, to just journalism. reading the world. Although, I mean, <laughs> I gotta say, I, I, I won't put it on now because it's a whole rigmarole. But when he had me in this, I thought I looked pretty good in it. You did, right? You did. <laughs> you very well. good. What can I say? This is the, one of the nicest Anna. guys you'll ever meet, by the way. Dan, Seriously. you would look good in a Tyvek suit. So oh, thank that's you. pretty much what that is. Thank so, you. yes. Hey, Way thank to you rock for what it. you do, Maybe I appreciate you having yeah, me. Yeah, good to see you yes, again, Officer Mays. Back upstairs. I'll bring some honey for you.